Good afternoon, I'm Tim. I'm Amy. And this is Coasters and Cosplays, and we are on day five of our Northeast Coaster Challenge that we're doing here across the Northeast United States. Today's adventure brings us actually to a small town. It's about an hour away from New York City, but we're technically in Chester right now, but we're also gonna be going to Goshen, which is right over near here too. And yeah, we there's a roller coaster here at a family fun center called the Castle family uh castle fun center that's what it is the castle fun center and yeah so we're gonna go check out their roller coaster and then after that we're gonna head over to legoland new york and uh, because they have two coasters there so we're gonna go explore that so yeah come check out this video with us as we ride the kitty coaster here and then go to legoland new york and here's a list of the prices looks like the coaster is six dollars per rider so i'm gonna get that and head over there they're definitely doing a lot of construction here you can see cleared out all this land and stuff. Don't know what else is coming on over here. Maybe they're putting in some new attractions. But the roller coaster is right over here. It's called the Dragon Coaster. It's not gonna be the only roller coaster we ride today called Dragon. So yeah, let's go ride our first Dragon Coaster of the day. Oh, look at the front. It's so cute. Such a cute little front car. All right, we're about to get on. Cute little dragon head. I'm gonna go for the back row. Yes. I don't think we're supposed to stop like this. <laughs> I think we broke this. I'm currently like tilted on the back hill right here. Yeah. I think we broke the ride. Oh no. Thanks to the supervisor who came and gave us a nice little push to get it back on the station properly. You just saw some footage from our ride on the Dragon Coaster here. And yeah, we uh, Evidently, it, it, we didn't get it all the way back in the station, so they had to come give us a push to get back in the station. So yeah, that was a little bit of a funny moment that never had that happen before on those that kind of coaster. So always fun, especially, it's always the kiddie coasters oh, that yeah. we end up having issues or like breaking down on or the video that just came out where we had a rollback. Yeah, we're, we're always having weird experiences <laughs> on kiddie coasters. Don't know why, it's just our luck. Also, we did talk to the supervisor and they said that they're actually gonna be putting in a new go-kart track outside. That's what this construction is right here. And then inside they're uh, working on adding a roller rink upstairs and then they're adding a bowling alley downstairs. So yeah, that they, they told us, they're nice enough to tell us what all is being added here. So yeah, no, no new coasters. So probably won't be back for a while if ever, if they don't ever build one. But yeah, it's the nice cute little place. Definitely very dead. It's a Tuesday afternoon at one, uh, two o'clock. So yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely very quiet. If we had more time today, we would definitely play around in mini golf because the mini golf course does look cute. But yeah, we're trying to get to Legoland before they close in four hours and ride the rides there. So we're gonna head over there. Nothing you have to add about that kitty coach, I'm assuming. Nope, the only thing I just have to add is I'm glad to see that they're updating stuff in little parks like these. Because it's not often that when we visit these little parks that they're actually doing renovations to add to it or, you know, make it more of an experience for people. It's nice to see that a little place like this is able to do that so they can hopefully get more people in, get more revenue, and just make it a more fun area. Oh, for sure. So for now, we're going to say goodbye to you guys for like a brief... 10 seconds, not even for you, like be like a millisecond, but we have a, a like a five minute drive over to Legoland. So we'll see you over at Legoland.
After a short five minute drive and the magic of YouTube, we're here at Legoland New York Resort for our first ever visit. This park is a really new park. It only opened three years ago. So we're excited to go and check it out. If you are a coaster enthusiast, just know this is a very expensive park to go to. Uh, I'll talk about it towards the end, what the cost is, but yeah, it's a very expensive place to just get two family coasters. Yeah. But we're gonna go and make the most of it. We're gonna go enjoy. We're gonna enjoy what this park has to offer. I've heard they got a really cool trackless dark ride. So yeah, we'll go check out what we can here in Legoland and we'll see if we can take you guys along with the GoPros. Not sure if they allow filming or not. So we're gonna go ask at guest services. There was no line to get in, so really quick, easy process, and here we are. We're in Legoland New York Resort. They have a mini figure sky flyer that looks like it's a aerial tram that goes across the park, so. Oh, it's a one-way trip. Great, this might take us towards the back of the park where the rides are. All right, here we go. We're going on the Skyway. Woohoo! All right, off we go. Hi, Dolce. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to the Good Shirt Shindy. And I'm Scallywag. Are you ready for some pirate party? We're heading to the greatest place of Lego Land in New York. Lego Pirates. Are you ready to learn a little bit of our lingo so you fit in with all the other mateys? Now, when yes. you want to say hello to a fellow pirate, what do you say? Ahoy! Ahoy! Just got off the minifigure Sky Flyer, which is very nice because there's the hill in the middle of the park where all the Legos are and it sort of helps you cut the walking down a little bit to get to the back of the park where the roller coasters are. So let's head that way. We made it to the Lego castle section of the park and that's where the two roller coasters are. The big one is called the Dragon and you can see it actually right over there. So let's go get on the Dragon. Here we go. Sadly, they said you cannot film on ride, so we'll just get some off ride footage. Have fun, guys. We just rode the Dragon, the biggest roller coaster here. And what did you think of that? It was actually very nice. Uh, I was surprised by how 
big a coast this coaster is for here. I was expecting it to be a lot smaller like it was in Florida when we went. Yeah, no, it's definitely my favorite dragon of the Legolands in the United States. Uh, that, yeah, it had almost like a little bit of a launch, like feel, it wasn't really a launch, but like it, like it propelled you forward after you did the dark ride sections, uh, to get to this, this outdoor portion. That was, that was unexpected. And then, yeah, that this, this, the helixes had actually some good, uh, forces on them. I was actually surprised. Like there's, there's some good speed and forces on those turns. So yeah, oh, I, yeah. I definitely liked that a lot. Now there's one more roller coaster we need to go ride, and that is the Dragon's Apprentice. It's the smaller version, it's the smaller coaster. So yeah, we're gonna go get that a ride right now. Look at the pretty dragons on the tower. They're so cute. We just got off of Dragon's Apprentice. It's the smaller kitty coaster here. And that was super fun, really smooth. You can tell that it's a newer one, especially compared to the little kids coaster we rode like an hour ago yeah. at Castle. That's definitely glass smooth. And yeah, it was, and it's also really cute. We took a photo of it, but there's a, there's a tower in the middle that's got these little Lego dragons. Super adorable, perfect for the kids. Great first roller coaster for a lot of kids, I bet. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? I did enjoy it. It was so cute. It's only two laps, so it wasn't too long of a ride. But oh, it was very pleasant. It was a very pleasant ride. Yep. So now we're gonna head up the hill and go head towards the couple of dark rides that I've heard really good things about. So we'll see you up at the dark rides. Before we go do the dark rides, we figure we go take a look around their mini land, which is the area where they have a bunch of famous buildings and different things all made out of Legos. So let's go check it out. Definitely looks like we got DC right here that we're gonna come up to first. Very pretty. We're actually gonna be checking out Washington DC at the end of this trip. So we'll have a vlog coming from that. So make sure you stick around because we're gonna be doing some sightseeing in DC. Oh boy. Let's see what this does. Does this do anything? Is there something with the fish over there? Oh yeah. The harder I pull, the fish comes. Look at that. Here's the replica of Independence Hall. We actually went and saw this when we were in Philadelphia. Here's the iconic Sears Tower from Chicago. I know it has a new name now, but it'll always be the Sears Tower to me. So big. Riding on a pony, stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Look at the skiers. These would be really nice on a sunny day. They got misters. Not really needed today because as you can if you couldn't tell, it's definitely a little cloudy today. Thankfully it's not raining, otherwise dragon would be closed. Yeah, we got very lucky. Look at all the red rocks. Oh, they got little NASA astronauts and a rover. Nice. Oh, and there's even a little group that's going uh, whitewater rafting. Look at them go. Whee! They're not going very far. And they have a Las Vegas replica section. Got the Luxor Hotel over there. They got the Bellagio and of course the famous fountains in front of the Bellagio. And of course, they have a replica of the stratosphere, which Amy and I actually jumped off of. 
really fun experience to do that. Definitely want to go again. And they've got a Golden Gate Bridge slash San Francisco area. We were just there last October and the vlogs are actually coming out right now as we're recording this. I'm trying to get all caught up and then the vlogs for this trip are finally going to go online. Hopefully in the next few weeks. I'm almost caught up. Yeah, Amy's almost caught up. I guess that kid had the magic touch because the zip line actually went. Look at that. Very cool. Press this button and then the indoor skydiving person starts moving around. Here's the New York City section. They got the Unisphere. Got a subway and of course in the background you've got the one World Trade Center. Also love the uh, ballpark stadium over here too. Show you that up close. Looks really cool. Look at all those people having fun at the ball game. Also, gotta love the Coney Island section. Amy's, Amy's spinning that. Uh oh, too fast, oh no. Very fun. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our Coney Island vlog. Had tons of fun there, riding the Cyclone. I don't know, what does that one do? Eat. Start yeah. eating. Click, click the button. Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. Oh, it would be for the hot dog eating contest. Oh, it's at a competition. Because there's two different Oh. Things. Let's see if we can get it. Let's both hit start. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. We've, now we're spinning. We're spinning, spinning, Faster? spinning. Faster? Stand here to see yourself in Times Square. Interesting. I wonder if there's a camera. Oh look, there's a camera! Look at that, there we are. Sort of hard to see, there we are. All pixely. Yep. Very appropriate for Legos. <laughs> All pixely. Very funny, they named the Lion King the Leopard Prince for copyright reasons. That's funny. Look at the breakdancer go! Woohoo! Yeah! I didn't realize that Goshen is famous for a historic racetrack of horses, a horse racing track. And they're off! All of Fame Trot is underway! Oh boy! There they go. Look at this adorable entrance to Smokey's Brick BQ. That's so cool. All right, we're gonna go on the factory adventure ride. This is one of the highlight attractions here. It's a trackless dark ride, so let's go give this a ride. Oh, they've got a Lego history timeline. So cool. Hey look, Legoland California opened in 99. 2002 is when the one in Germany opened. 2011 is Florida. And all the way over here. Oh, Malaysia opened in 2012. Japan in 2017. And then New York 2021. 
Ooh, top secret. Hank. So we're in the Lego factory. Oh yeah. Ooh, the top secret ride vehicle right there. Oh, they got a brick production chart. Alright, we just rode the Brick Factory Adventure Dark Ride and it's got a re it's a really nice ride system. It's the new trackless dark ride. And what did you think of that? I thought it was really nice. It's a nice little uniqueness to the to the park. It's not too bad, even though there's a couple of screens in there, it didn't bother my motion sickness too much, which is really nice. The trains do move just a, a smidge, but it's nothing crazy. Yeah, no, it's a super fun ride. You're you're constantly moving throughout the the rooms, and you're going from room to room. And basically, they shrink you down to the size of a minifigure. And there's at one point, like you know, they're, they're, it's a really cool little thing that they do with the camera, and like it makes it look like you're a little Lego. And it's like you like wave and stuff, and the the Lego's waving. It's super cool. And yeah, I absolutely love that ride. Easily the best ride that we've done here. We've only done a few, but that's a really good standout ride. And yeah, super fun. Glad we did that one. Up next, we have one more dark ride we're gonna go do. It's the Ninjago shooting dark ride. And you get like, you sort of, we're gonna go like this. You, you shoot across and yeah, let's go over there and ride Ninjago. Ninjago the ride. And they even have a meet and greet character out. Hello. That's gonna be us. Look at them shooting with their arms. Yas! Gotta get our 3D glasses. Thank you. Right, we just rode Ninjago, the shooting dark ride where you're like trying to shoot across that way like you're a ninja. What do you think of that? I am not a fan of it. Dark rides where you're trying to shoot at stuff, unless there's a way where you can see where you're shooting, I'm not a fan because I don't like where I have almost zero control over where things go. And like it tells you how to move your arms to aim, but if I would be trying to aim, it would just shoot something and then when I'm at my aim point, nothing comes out. So it was just frustrating all around. And the best way to do it is just to go ham like Tim did, but then it's like at that point, it's not worth it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the same with other dark rides. Like if there's no screen or a way to see your laser pointer for the where you're shooting, it's just not worth it. Yeah, no, I definitely, I, I agree. Literally, I feel like that one is like literally just designed to just, like you just try to swipe as fast as you can across and it doesn't really matter where you're aiming uh, because yeah, it's really hard to try to control where, what you're actually shooting at like she talked about. And yeah, this is actually cloned at like every single Legoland park. And I, I, I get, I 
bet the kids love it. It's just not for us. I, I mean, I, I'm obviously they they have they have the success with this because it's oh gosh, I'm training losing my train of thought. This is meant for kids and not for adults. Yes. And we go to a lot of parks that are geared more towards older like teenagers or adults and stuff like this it's easier to work with because you have an actual gun and there's actually ways of aiming because it actually matters while here it's just it's great for the kids to just go ham on it and it doesn't matter at the end of the day yeah for real sorry i i lost my train of thought i don't know what what was going on anyways that's all the big attractions here that we were trying to get done so we're probably to head now towards the park exit so we'll go recap it over at the front well, that's going to wrap up our brief visit here to Legoland New York Resort. We're only here for about a couple of hours because there's no lines really in there at all. It was pretty dead. It's a Tuesday afternoon yep. in the towards the end of July. But yeah, what, what are your thoughts about this park? It is a good kids park. It is it, it's very good set up for the kids. You can never tell it's geared more towards kids. They've got a few things the adults could do, but it's definitely a kids park. Yeah, it's a great park for kids, like she said. We're definitely not the target demographic, uh, but we still had fun while we were here. I love that uh, the dark ride, the, the brick where you turn into a little mini brick. That was super fun. Uh, the dragon coaster was unexpectedly fun. Oh, love yeah. that one. And yeah, so we got our plus two. I know I said it earlier, but uh, I'll talk about it now. This place is expensive. It, oh, yeah. uh, just, just to put it in perspective, I got $10 off discount tickets through my work. And for both of us, it's about $145. And then parking is $35 per car. And yeah, and that's even if you book it online in advance, still 35 bucks. It's a very expensive place. The food, just a pretzel. Oh, a pretzel it's is like 11 bucks. Yeah. And if you want to do the fast lane stuff or the, the reserve, like, Oh yeah. The reserve, you do it the same way as you would with ADA. The only difference is ADA is free. But if you want to reserve, it's like $86 each. Yeah, it's about 80, yeah, $86 per person for their fast pass system on top of the uh, the normal ticket price, about $82 per adult. And yeah, that's it's definitely pricey. So you have to be committed if you want to come here to get your credits. You have to just know that you're going to be spending a lot of money to get the credits, but we got them. Don't know if we're ever to come back, if, unless they add something massive and worth coming back for, we probably won't. But glad we did get to check it out. We're actually gonna be heading now to another park because they're open till 8 p.m. So yeah, we're getting a little bonus uh, park in here. It's called Quasi Amusement Park. And yeah, so come and join us for a little bonus park in this vlog. Head over to Quasi. they got two roller coasters there. Okay, it's an hour and a half later and we've arrived at Quasi Amusement Park here and i think it's called waterbury connecticut it's a very small town off the beaten trail sort of a, a theme for the last couple of days we've just been yeah. going everywhere to ride roller coasters but uh yeah we google maps had us go these back roads and so i'll have amy put in the footage literally we were like off-roading for a little bit and just because there was a backup and an accident on the main highway so yeah it took us these back roads and yeah i just thought it was just like Never thought I'd be off-roading in the middle of New York, Connecticut border. Nope. <laughs> nope, but we did. But we're here safely, that's what matters. And we called ahead. They do have both coasters open today. They have a little dipper, so it's going to be the first time actually riding one fully because we rode one that didn't go all the way around. But we'll talk about that when we get over there. But yeah, let's head inside Quasi Amusement Park for our first ever visit. Let's head inside. They do have a included water park over there, but the water park closes in like five minutes, so we're not doing that today. Just here for the coasters and maybe some flat rides. Are they sure they have the licensing for this? I don't know. One quick thing to note that at the time of filming, they actually have an after four o'clock deal, and it was only 44 or $45 for both of us to get admission after 4 p.m. So especially after spending a crap ton to get the credits at Legoland, New York, it's much appreciated that it's so cheap here and that it, it was only $10 for parking. So yeah, helps the wallet a little bit after Legoland. We found the first coaster, the Little Dipper. We found it. And we also found more characters that I doubt they have the licensing for. <laughs> Always funny to see parks that take creative liberties to use a uh, Let's just say common known characters. 
Cool, we're good. The little dipper here at Quasi. Woo! First time riding a little a little dipper. Let's go. Woohoo! We made it. No rollback. We just rode our first ever Alan Herschel Little Dipper fully. Insert the, you have to insert the footage, but if you haven't seen it, go and watch the video where we rode one that hasn't even opened to the public and we got to the top of the lift hill and then had to, we had to roll back as the lift motor broke. So yeah, at least we got fully around on this one. That was so much fun. I, you know, there it's, it's small, it's old, so it's a little bit bumpy and shaky, but I, I loved it. I thought there was a good airtime moment. You on... get a lot of ejector on that thing. It, it throws you around. Oh yeah, no, I, I liked it a lot. Great uh, kids coaster here. And yeah, I think that, is that all you have for that? Pretty much so. Okay, but we're gonna head over now to the big roller coaster here. It's a family wooden coaster by the Gravity Group. It's called Wooden Warrior, so let's go check it out. They have a tube water slide that you can actually ride in the dry park. Looks like fun. Enclosed, so it'd be probably really dark in there. Here we are, the main event, the Wooden Warrior. Oh, there's an observation deck. We're gonna have to go check that out after we get the ride. We made it up into the station. Time to get a ride on Wooden Warrior. <laughs> you ready? I don't know. I've heard it's pretty good. We'll find out. Alrighty. was great up front. Let's see how this back goes. That's a back row coaster. Oh, yes it is. That airtime was so good. You just saw some on-ride footage of us riding Wooden Warrior. It's a Gravity Group family wooden roller coaster. What were your thoughts of that? Oh, it definitely packs a punch if you're in the back row. So we rode the front and the back. The front is nice, but the back has the force. Yeah, tons of airtime, especially for its size. It doesn't look like much, but boy, does it have a lot of good airtime. Really, really liked that a lot. Really glad we came out here. This wooden coaster alone is worth coming to this park for. Oh, yeah. And so yeah, we're gonna probably go get at least one more ride on it, and then we'll probably be heading out. So we'll catch up with you probably at the park exit. Yeah. 
Amy pointed out that their drop tower ride here is ironically called Free Fallin'. Everyone sing along with me. I'm free, free fallin' at Lake Quasi Amusement Park. All right, guys, actually, right when we finished our re-rides, started to rain, so that's why we're back here in the car to wrap up today's video. We got two more rides in the back row, so that brought us to a total of three back row rides, as well as the front row ride on Wooden Warrior. And yeah, I absolutely love that thing. That's a like really, really good family wooden coaster that has a good amount of thrills for the adults, but also isn't too intense or big for the kids to enjoy. And there was kids that were just lapping it while we were there. They just kept going around and around. So glad to see that everyone of all ages is enjoying that thing. Oh yeah, and it's definitely, I mean, it's worth coming to this park for that ride alone, that coaster alone. But the whole park itself is really nice. The employees that we talked with were all nice. The roller coaster and even the little dipper were both nice. There was the drop tower. There was a bunch of other flat rides. Plus the water park looked really good. Oh yeah. And also, we we got here too late to do it, but they have paddle boats out on the lake. I got some uh, a video of the panoramic, but that lake's absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, if we had had more time here, I definitely probably would have gone on the paddle boats out there and enjoyed the park from the water view. Uh, that would have been really cool, but de didn't have the time today since we were at Legoland earlier and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, that's going to wrap up today's video. I know it's been a little bit of a mukbang of castle family fun center then lego landed now here at quasi but we we said that we agreed that we we're glad we ended the day here wooden warrior was a fantastic way to end a fun day expensive day but a fun day <laughs> especially because in the original plan we weren't supposed to be here yet yep so we're a day and a half ahead of schedule from what we originally planned yep so we're we're, we're making up and that way you have buffer later on in the trip in case something happens, which is especially we're going to Canada uh, at the end of this week, beginning of next week. And so, you know, with crossing the border, we never know what could happen and stuff might take extra yeah. time. And so, yeah, I'm glad we have the buffer now so that we can, if something comes up, we can accommodate it later in our schedule. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so much if you're watching this still. Thank you so much for watching the whole time. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends if you're enjoying the content we're putting out. And we're going to keep on doing it. And until, uh, until we see you guys in the next video, I hope you have a great day. Bye! Bye.